In today's video, we're going to talk all about fishing leaders. We're going to cover things such as what is a fishing leader? How long should your fishing leader be? Why do we use leaders? And how do we make them? So thanks for tuning in today. If you haven't already become a subscriber to this channel, please do so by clicking that subscribe button. And today we're going to talk about fishing leaders. Now, everything that I do, I use a fishing leader, but not everybody needs a fishing leader. So what is a fishing leader exactly? It is a piece of line that we are going to tie on to the end of our line coming off our reel. It doesn't matter what kind of reel we're using, a fishing leader is tied onto the end of that line, either using a line-to-line -line connection or some kind of device such as a swivel. What kinds of things are fishing leaders made out of? Well, there's a variety of materials. They can be things such as fluorocarbon. They can be regular monofilament. They could be some cable wire type leader. There is thin wire, piano wire type leaders. There are nylon coated leaders. There are steel leaders. So there's a variety of materials that leaders are made out of. Probably the two most popular materials are going to be your mono and your fluorocarbon. And following right behind that would be a metal or steel leader for fish with very sharp teeth. If you're trying to decide which type of material you should choose, well, if you're not fishing in an area where the fish have very sharp teeth, you can pretty much eliminate the need for any type of those wire or metal leaders. So then you would want to stick to either fluorocarbon or monofilament leaders. Fluorocarbon is going to cost significantly more than your monofilament, but it has less refractivity and is less visible under the water. Fluorocarbon will also sink quite a bit faster than monofilament. So that's something I want to take into consideration. If I'm using a topwater plug or lure or something that I want to float on the surface, then I probably would want to use a monofilament leader in most cases because it won't sink and pull down the nose or front of your lure as much as a fluorocarbon leader would do. Why do we use a fishing leader? Well, there's a variety of reasons. The first and probably the most common is to have a stronger or weaker piece of line tying your hook onto the line coming off your reel. Most of the cases where I fish, we may use only 10 pound main line, but I use a 15, 25, 30, sometimes a 50 or even 100 pound leader to my lighter line. So for my tarpon fishing setup, I may have 20 or 30 pound braided line, a 50 to 100 pound leader, for my inshore saltwater setup, I just have 10 pound braided line and a 20 pound leader. The fish have little teeth, not something that's going to slice through 20 pound readily. So I choose to use my 20 pound leader and I tie that onto the end of my line on my reel. There may be other cases where you want to have a lighter line tying your hook onto your main line. So if you're fishing an area where there's heavy snags, lots of rocks, it's quite often that the hook or your bait is getting caught in those rocks, in the branches, etc. Instead of having to constantly retie on your weight or lose a lot of your main line. So if I was using a heavier leader, a lighter main line, I'm going to continuously breaking the line that's coming off my reel means every time I'm taking more and more and more line off my reel, I'm going to have to re-spool sooner. If I used a lighter piece of leader than the line on my reel, that in theory should break first and I won't lose a bunch of line off my reel. Another very important reason to use a leader is that it's less visible, especially if we're using braided line. Everything I use is braided line. I always tie on a leader. And the main reason I do is because it's less visible. The second reason I do is because I don't want to constantly be cutting line off my reel. So just as we talked about a minute ago, where you would put on a lighter leader, so you're breaking the leader, not your main line. I want to save my main line. So I tie on a piece of leader 
That way throughout the day or throughout various trips where I'm cutting and retying different hooks or lures, I'm only cutting that leader section. So I may be getting five or more cuts on the leader before I need to change it. Or if I'm tying directly to my main line, every time I retie my lure, I'm cutting more and more off my spool. Now it isn't a whole lot, but if you change lures frequently, it's going to add up quickly. Even if you are using monofilament on your reel, you may want to put a leader, even if it's exactly the same size as the monofilament on your reel, so that you're not cutting off reel from your spool all throughout the day. Another reason we may want to use leaders is when we're tying specific types of rigs. One of the most popular bait fishing rigs is the Carolina rig, where we would put our main line through a sinker, then we attach a swivel, and onto the swivel, we would tie our leader and then our hook. When the weight is sitting on the bottom and the fish begins to bite, it can pull line through the barrel sinker without the fish feeling the weight. In order to do this, we have to have something to stop the weight and we're using a swivel. So you would have to tie a leader on in that situation. There are other situations where I may want to tie on a metal or a cable or a wire fishing leader. Uh, something we would use here if there was a lot of sharks around, if there was a lot of mackerel, or if you're fishing inshore in freshwater, maybe where there's some big musky and they have big teeth, they're going to cut through your monofilament. We would need a leader. So here's my steel leader. Onto this, I could either tie my main line directly or I could tie an additional piece of clear monofilament or fluorocarbon leader and then tie that to my main line. Another purpose of having a leader on here, especially if you're an angler that uses braided line, is when we get the fish up to the boat and we have to grab that line in order to control the fish, it's much nicer to be grabbing on to a piece of monofilament or fluorocarbon than grabbing on to your braided line. Big fish, braided line, ends up usually cutting your hand. So it gives us something safer to grab onto. How do we attach our leader to our main line? There's a couple different knots that I use. One is the double uni knot. So it's for tying either braid to, to my fluoro or mono, or I could use it to tie a monofilament or fluorocarbon main line to my leader. Tying two pieces of line together, I either use a double uni knot or the improved Alberto knot. And I have videos on both of those. You can check them out. And I'd also be interested in knowing what types of knots you guys are using to tie your leaders on, because there's always something to learn. So I've used various knots throughout my fishing career, and I'm always interested in learning what works for other people. So leave me a comment below. Tell me what kind of leader knot you are using that works best for you. We can tie on our leader to our main line is by using a swivel. So we already covered this a minute ago. It's when I would put a swivel on to tie a Carolina type rig so I could have my weight slide up and down the main line and my bait could be free to move around in the current. Or if it was a live bait, it could swim around. If I did not have the swivel, the weight is going to slide all the way down to the hook, pinning my bait to the bottom. The other situation where I would typically use a swivel is if I was using a bait that spins a lot, such as a spoon. Uh, if you're using a spoon bait and you reel it a little bit too fast, it has a tendency to spin and it can twist up your line. So I stick a swivel onto the spoon. That way there's less chance my line gets twisted up. So if you're experiencing twist issues from your lures, you may want to have a swivel, but if I don't need a swivel because of that reason or because of a specific type rig I am making, it's not something that I put on there. It's just another piece of hardware that's easier for the fish to see. Some fish will actually attack the swivel when they see the light flashing off it. 
I always, always tie my two pieces of line together unless I have a lure that twists or I'm making some type of bait fishing rig. But if you don't need the swivel, I highly recommend you don't use it. When we go to purchase fishing leader, you will find spools that actually say fishing leader right on them. And you'll find spools of regular fishing line. What's the difference and why do these fishing leader spools cost so much more? I would imagine about what I paid for this 50 yards of leader material, I got 370 yards of regular fishing line. The price is pretty much the same. Here I'm going to get a lot of years of fishing leader where this one might last me a year or two. The material that they make this leader material out of is generally stiffer. It's more abrasion resistant. So if that's what we're putting the leader on for, for fishing the place where fish have small teeth, or have rocks, uh, pilings, docks, barnacles, etc., something that's likely to break our line, that added bit of abrasion resistance is probably worth the extra money. That being said, if you needed a piece of 20 pound leader material, you could probably buy yourself some 40 pound uh, regular fishing line, get about the same thing out of it. If you're looking to save some money, you can buy some heavier uh, fishing line, but I generally purchase the leader material separately because I just like that added abrasion resistance. One very important topic that's up for a lot of debate is how long should I make my leader? Now, if you're tying uh, one of the bait fish rigs, what I found is if you put a long leader on there, especially you have to drop it down in some deeper water or where there's some current, you will find that your sinker goes down very quickly. The bait stays up higher and it tends to wrap around the main line and you think you're fishing with a nice Carolina rig and it's just a big twisted up mess when you pull it back up. So I tend to keep those short, uh, a lot of times, not much more than 18 inches or so. Where the debate comes into play is generally when people are tying a leader onto their braided line or even onto their formal monofilament or fluorocarbon. Two schools of thought. There's one that put on extremely long leaders so that there's no chance whatsoever that that fish is seeing your braided line. And I'm at the other end of the spectrum where I use a relatively short leader because I do not like to reel the knot up through my guides. Especially when we're using heavier leaders, say 30 pound and up. And on a lot of today's rods, the guides get smaller and smaller. Some rods even have micro guides. If you're not using extremely small knot like that Alberto knot, you can't even get them through the guides. But even with a knot like that, I don't like that knot hitting all my guides as it goes in and out with every cast. Most of my leaders that I use are between 24 and 36 inches long. Earlier in the day, I may be reeling that leader up into my guides a little bit, maybe eight or 10 inches or so, usually not past the first guide through the tip and the first guide. And as I cut and retie a couple of times, I generally wind up with my leader just outside the tip of the rod. If I measured my favorite distance from the lure to the rod tip for casting, it's right about 24 inches. That gives me a good combination of distance and accuracy. There are certainly casts where I'll reel that up much, much shorter, such as a skip cast or trying to cast up underneath something. There are times where I'll let out a lot more lines for things such as a pitch cast. Generally, I'm going to have about two feet of line outside the tip. So if you don't plan on cutting and retying a bunch throughout the day, tie on about a two foot leader, keep that knot just outside your tip when you're casting. You won't damage your guides. I've had inserts on these tip tops pop out from larger knots with heavier leader actually knock the insert right out of there and you won't be wearing your knot on the guides every time you cast you'll find other people that insist you have to have this very long leader a three four even a five foot leader and they will reel their leader all the way up almost to the reel before they make their cast 
If that works for you, that's perfectly fine. There is no hard and set rule. I'm just telling you what works for me. And a lot of times by the time I'm cutting and retying throughout the day, my leader might not even be any longer than a foot or so. I've caught more fish than I could ever count on an extremely short leader. Location, casting, presentation will trump the leader importance just about every single time. There may be occasions in extremely clear water, extremely sensitive fish, you may want a longer leader, but overall, I'm not using a leader longer than two feet, three feet at the longest. Hopefully this answered your questions you might have had about what is a fishing leader. If you're already using fishing leaders, leave me a comment below. Tell me what's your favorite material. Do you like mono? Do you like fluoro? Do you use swivels? Don't you use swivels? Put your comment down there. It helps everyone else. It gives lots of input for people to take in when they are new to fishing. If you're going to be in the Orlando or Central Florida area, be sure to give me a call for an inshore saltwater fishing charter.